like my first question is more about the idea of the film. How did it come to you to do uh, Land of the Little People? It all started, I think, uh, more than 20 years ago, actually, when uh, a military base, actually a military factory, which is not so far away from where I live, it, it, it blew up. And I remember it as a, as a young child. I, I, I saw the mushroom in the sky. It was amazing. And we all thought, well, this is the atom bomb and we are screwed. But actually, it was the military factory going on fire. And uh, a, f a few years later, I started going to this place because it was abandoned after that. And it turned out to be this uh, unique place, closed place. Nobody goes inside. Animals started to gather there. It, it turned out to be an amazing place, which I really liked. And I really wanted to, to tell a story about this place. So, after, after a few years, I had uh, this idea and I wrote this script about this place, actually. What about also the, uh, the story in itself? Why the war? Why the kids? Um, and what is this, uh, this uh, battlefield for, for the kids? What does it represent to, to them? Well, a another thing is that a few years back, my daughter, was, she was in kindergarten there. Uh, an officer, a military officer, he was one of the parents of the, of the children. He came to speak with the children about military. Not everybody in Israel, they go to the military. It's a part of the Israel, Israeli way of life. And he came to speak with the children. And my daughter, she was surprised. She never heard anything about military, soldiers, war, nothing. It was the first time this concept was introduced to her. And that night when she came back home, she was terrified, actually. And I had to explain to her about, all about it. And uh, she said, I don't want to go to the military when I grow up. <laughs> and I thought to myself, well, she had like 15 years to get used to the idea. And that's really the, the story about Israeli children. We all know from a very young age that someday we'll have to go and serve in the, in the military. And it's not like military in Europe. Usually you have to go and fight. And you, in, in the beginning, you don't want to. You, say, you are afraid from this idea. But after a few years, you get used to the idea. You, you start training yourself, start training your mind to prepare you for, for that day. So what's, what does it do to us as a society that, when, that everybody is tuned to be a military man? And when I've been to the army, of course, I've seen that not everybody is suited to military service and actually the military prisons, and that's a fact that no, no, not many people know and not many people talk about that the military prisons in Israel are full with deserters, people that are not suitable for military service and uh, they don't want to serve. This is also why two deserters? Of course, I, I knew people like that. They're, they're not, th these people, the two deserters that is, are in this film, they are not rebellious against, the, they're not political. Uh, rebellious. They don't rebel against the, the regime in Israel. They're just not suitable physically yeah. and mentally to military service. So it's it's a different kind of uh, deserters. And we have a lot of people like that. We don't talk about it. Uh, it is a kind of taboo or...? In Israel it's very difficult to be, not to, not to serve in the army. Because everybody, most of the people, they do it. So it's, it's difficult to stay out of the system. But still, there are people that are outside of, of the system, like Israeli Arabs. Israeli Arabs, they don't go, they don't serve in the army. And there are other people as well. And um, I think the society, they look at, the, look at these people as some kind of outsiders, in a way. Because it's so base, basic. In the society, it's so it's a very essential part of who we are. It's like going to school in each country. Everybody go to school, and in Israel, it's well known. You have to go to school, and after school, you go to the army, and then you can go to university. Usually, between the army and school, people go to India. They, 
they go to other countries uh, to relax especially to India like to escape reality and uh, that's a part, of, a part of the tradition and what about the kids because actually they they grew up in this uh, city uh, which like the war is is there and they seem to be very um, suited to 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 fight well this neighborhood this village where the children live it's like um, it's actually like an officer military officers uh, neighbor all the parents are not they are regular soldiers in the army and the children of course they want to be like their parents and uh, and there is war all around but you have to understand that every few years we have war like that in Israel and when we shot the film it was 2014 a war started in the second day of the shooting a real war started so it was in the background while we mm. were shooting the film show you a clip of what happened during when we heard the siren when we've been shooting and it's and in the in the last day of shooting i was drafted myself to serve so it's it's crazy it was a war outside a war inside it was it was very difficult to make the film when bombs were falling around real bombs and i have to convince the mothers to let me keep shooting with the children and uh, somehow we managed to keep keep going and keep doing it but it's a part of maybe to outsiders it looks strange and say okay there is a war and the war is there but in israel which is a, such a small place and we shoot the film in the middle of israel not in some far away place it's right next to tel aviv actually it's 10 kilometers from tel aviv and, <coughs> and still bombs were falling around and because it's so small, it's 40 kilometers from Gaza, it's nothing. Talking again about the, the kids and the actors, how did you choose them? What you were looking for when you pick up exactly these four uh, kids who are great, emotionless, brutal, violent? Again, you have to understand that it's not only finding these children, these actors, which are not yeah. actors, I had to find the, the parents as well, the parents that will allow me to go on and, and shoot a script like that. After finding the children, I had to send the script to the parents and it was difficult to find parents that will allow their children to, to be a part of such a film. But somehow we, we managed to find children and parents and they agreed and, and then there was the actual war during the shooting and it was I remember one of the mothers she was asking but there is shelter nearby and I said no no we're in open space there's no shelter nearby and and still she agreed because it was during the the holiday the summer holiday she preferred that the child, her kid will be with us and not, and not stay uh, alone at home so for her it was better and um, yeah, but people outside outside of Israel think it's it's crazy. They will never agree to something like that. But somehow we managed to do it. I think it's a miracle, really. I want to ask you something again about the kids. Do they did they watch the movies? The movie afterwards? Well, they didn't read the script. Of course, they watched the movie and they watched it a few times in film festivals in Israel and in the screening that we had here in uh, Tel Aviv. Yeah, and they even brought their family and uh, their friends and uh, yeah. And how was their reaction when they saw themselves in this, uh, when, they, when they saw the, the entire movie? What was their reaction then? I, I'm not sure, sure they understand all the complexity <laughs> of the message. I, and I'm not sure they care. <laughs> they enjoy it and they happy to see themselves in the film. Um, I'm not sure they realize it will take a few years realize all the details but the parents uh, do understand it and the parents do like the film so it's it's really i'm happy that we could manage to find these families that will support us with with the children and support us even in the screenings afterwards they 
the, the parents themselves they, they bring the family they bring the friends so up until now we are in good connection with the children with the parents it's like a, it's like a, a small family ah oh, that's so nice yeah. um, actually they play with the monster uh, in the film they feed them a monster um, and I know that like everyone will 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 see whatever they 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 see in the monster but like what was uh, your idea of the monster in the film well the idea behind the monster is that you know the most crazy things about military in, in war is that the only place that you are allowed to go and kill other people is during battle and think how crazy it is that you are actually allowed not only allowed your order to go and kill other people it's crazy and for doing it a man a human being it need, we need a reason to do something like that and the reason that we as a society we found we find to go and do so, something like that is religion we invented the god and the god tell us well you have to do this and that and then we go and fight uh, over over uh, over the land and and that the same thing that the children are doing is like uh, analogy for the life here that they invented their own god the god this monster in the world it for the monster they go and hunt and kill other animals and eventually they kill other people to feed the monster so the monster is is like a god for them the same like we have our own gods and our own gods tell us the same thing go to war go to find go to to kill other people and and we, and we are fine by it most soldiers that go in war and kill other people not all of them but many of them they don't feel ashamed they don't feel uh, they don't have any problem with it because it's a part of our society it's something that we all agree to do we in our mind it's okay and only because we have this idea of a god yeah you say like also um, in the beginning you know, there is this sentence like uh, in the name of, of a flag which we can extend or, or, or flag could be a belief could be a religion as you just said for god we, we this is the reason why we choose a land because god gave us this land and then we have to fight for the land and uh, we do it not only in our name we do it in the name of god uh, you, you talk about how difficult it was to screen the movies the movie for several reason also because there was a war in the middle but another thing that really got my attention is that you produce it uh with uh, tony copti so it is an israeli uh, palestinian production could you tell us more about it um, Tony is a good friend of mine. He's an Israeli Arab, which means he support. He's a Palestinian ideology. Um, so, but you have to understand that in Israel, it's very common that Israelis are Arab and Israeli Jews working together. It's we live together, we work together. We are not like uh, enemies. Also, with Palestinians, we have you know people among ourselves actually we we are in good connection it's only the governments that makes all the the problem for us the people of course for him the the message of the film he as a israeli arab as a palestinian he suffers a lot from this military uh, society because he himself he can't go to the army so he's like he, he will always be like a, a kind of an outsider he didn't serve the army and then you see all the time you see soldiers in the street and these soldiers sometimes do harm to his brothers and sisters in Palestine so it's very difficult for him the concept of military and he's a part of a country which is all about military so for him there is like a, a strong connection to this kind of scenes Talking more about the film, like how you made it, uh, I'm really curious to know uh, something about the atmosphere you created for the movie, like in terms of music, but also in terms of light, because it's a, 
it's a let's say somehow a horror movie but completely shot in a daily light so no darkness i mean the darkness seems to be somewhere else maybe inside the characters israel is uh, we have a, a very strong sound even now here in we are almost we are almost in november it's it's still very hot outside uh, so the sun here is a uh, is another character and the sun here the sun plays a strong uh, role uh, fighting against these soldiers fighting against the, the the children it's very warm the sun is uh, drying everything and they're, they're very thirsty so it's a uh, it's really a part of uh, of the atmosphere of the of the film and um what about like the use of the music how did, did you work with the music with the sound it wasn't easy to find the the, the right st- soundtrack for the film and i worked with a good friend of mine uh, he's the composer god emil zaito and uh, we we wanted to have a more like a spaghetti western score but it, it didn't fit the film uh, eventually we had to 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 settle with a, a score which is more uh, similar to the to what's happening on the screen which is more intense more like a thriller uh, which helped to intensify what's happening on the screen yeah so like uh, your your influence somehow is a bit of the spaghetti western culture a film culture I, I think this film is also a little bit a western it's you know the the, the chaos which is uh, happening happening all around the fight over territory it's a very it, it's a, it's a part of westerns and yeah there is like something else that you would like to to add making a film like this in israel is it's it's is, it's really a struggle because nobody in Israel want to deal with these subjects uh, now the government that we have here now most of the people they 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 very angry about the situation they angry at each other um, hope is very far away we, we we don't really see a solution in the in the in nearby so it was very hard to find that this film it's very, it was very hard to screen it in Israel a lot of people saw this film as, a, as an insult but actually I, it was very important for me and for the people that were involved in, involved in the film to show it in Israel and to bring it to the people so we'll better understand what is happening to us as a society what we're turning into and I'm not saying that kids in Israel go and kill other people but as a society we are a very violent society we are violent in the way we uh, choose how we choose to solve our little conflicts as well as how we solve the bigger conflicts so it's uh, that's the problem that we have in Israel I think this problem is not only in Israel it's all over the world but we see it more intensified here in Israel and, and uh, I hope that it will change I'm not so optimistic actually but I wanted to show it to the people I want the people to acknowledge to see what's happening to the society what's happening to their own children and like yeah you mentioned that you screen the movie uh, in Israel so like some people uh, got to to watch it and the reaction was like divided yeah, it's uh, most of the people a lot of I can say because when you, you show a film in Tel Aviv, you have to understand that Tel Aviv is very liberal. So most of the people in Tel Aviv, they think the same or they think very similar. So it was easier to show it here. But when we showed it like in the south of the country, people get got very uh, angry. And there were a lot of shouting. Actually, we, we showed, we screened the film in New York, in the, in the Israeli film festival and a lot of... Uh, 
Jewish people came to see it and they didn't like it. It was too hard for them. They didn't, they, they couldn't take that there is something bad happening in Israel. And this bad thing is not only in the society, it's with the children actually. We're doing something bad to them, to the children, to our own children. So there was fighting also there. So for Israelis and, uh, and people who love Israel as a concept, it's very hard to see a film like that. But uh, I believe that films should deal with uh, hard subject. It's, it's a way to, to cope with our own fears, with, with the, with the thing that troubles us. And that's the way I cope with it. And uh, thank you for coming and watching the film. Hey, thank you for making it. And last thing, like you're working on on a new project. There is something that you can tell about about your future projects. Well, there is a lot of projects in my mind, a project that I'm developing, but it's too soon, I think, to, to really speak about it. Well, you will keep us posted then. Yeah, I will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, for the interview.